Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Sweetie Kiwi Show. I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous. If you're doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee and tea or vodka <laughs> and let's roll. Today, I want to talk to you about what to do if you believe your job is at risk. This is an important topic given the circumstances, but it is a topic that is perennial, that applies to any situation, whether you are in a, we are in a recession or not. It really applies. Now, for this is an extraordinary time, so we are doing the, the show actually live from my house. We're not in the studio, so please bear with us in terms of technology. We'll, we'll try to do things as soon as, as, uh, as properly as possible. What to do if you believe your job is at risk? Now, this is very important. Now, the, well, the first thing I want you to think about is that if you think your job is at risk, you'd be better take things proactively and mount a proper strategy. Now is not the time to doubt, waver, or sit around waiting for the unwelcomed to happen before you act. Take your life in your own hands and implement these three quick tips today, the, the tips I'm going to give you, so you want to pay attention. Now, the first tip, very important, gather all your resources. You want to determine your net worth. Be quiet, be calm, you know, don't panic. What is your net worth? Net worth stands for assets minus liabilities, right? So your assets mean what you own and your liabilities, of course, mean what you owe, right? So you kind of gather in one column. If you're familiar with the budgeting, you know you want to put in one column your assets. So that would be cash, your investment account. If you have a car that is paid off, if you have a home that is paid off, anything you owe or you own rather is your assets. And then in the other column, you want to put your liabilities, right? So you, everything, you, all the obligations you have, starting from credit card, unpaid balances of credit cards, mortgage, uh, mortgage payment, student loans, car loans, and so on and so forth, right? So having a clear idea of how much you are worth, if you are in the positive territory or the negative territory, that will clearly allow you to understand where you currently are and what you should do to get to where you want to get to all right do you have a rainy day account this is something you have to think about do you have it now think about it a rainy day account is basically it's also called um, an emergency fund right so experts will uh, advise you to have somewhere between six months to nine months worth of uh, monthly expenses but i personally recommend 15 to 18 months so if Overall, you spend $2,000 $2, every month. You want to have it in that rainy day fund somewhere between $12,000 to $18,000, right? So that will be six months. So six times two being 12. So another thing you want to pay attention to is whether or not you have investments, right? So you're talking about what specialists call marketable securities. In other words, you have an account that, you know, you trade, you buy and sell securities into that is not, that is separate from a retirement account, right? An IRA or a 401k. So you want to sort of figure that. And if you do think about how much money you have in the account. Now, granted, the balance of your portfolio, the balance of uh, security, investment securities fluctuates every single day, depending upon the, the whims of the uh, financial markets, right? But you, it's just better to have an idea of how much you have. Retirement account, of course, is very important. Now, I'm going through all this to let you understand that the best way to understand, to, to the best way to tackle a potential job loss is to know how much money you have, how much resources you have. So that's why we're going through this in the first step. Insurance. What kind of insurance do you have, right? Do you have life insurance? Do you have medical insurance? Do you have the basic necessary insurance policies, right? Insurance is basically a risk mitigation tool. It is something that is there to cover you when the unwelcome, when the unexpected happens so that your financial stability is preserved, right? So you want to sort of do a little qu a quick audit of your situation to see what kind of insurance you have and determine whether or not you have an insurance gap an insurance gap means you are basically estimating how much you should be covered versus how much you are currently covered, right? So another thing you want to pay attention to is expenses, what I call, not what I call, I mean, what specialists call discretionary expenses, right? Those are expenses that are not mandatory. 
So, you know, everything from um, traveling to subscription dues to Netflix. I mean, uh, what's going on with my screen here? Um, <laughs> the screen got kind of dis disappeared. So we are, okay, we are, we are back. This is the, this is what a live programming is. <laughs> so basically what I'm trying to say here is that I was talking about discretionary expenses. So you want to think about those that you have to be able to shed, right? So anything that is not necessary to maintain a normal lifestyle, think about whether or not you should uh, just throw it away. Not throw it away, but cut it, right? Now, do you have debts that you can renegotiate, right? Do you want to ask for a loan modification? This could, or you can ask for what the legal experts call a temporary stay on payment. In other words, your payments are suspended for three months or six months. You have to negotiate that with your mortgage lender so that you're able to have a positive financial situation. Again, this is, I'm just giving you here all the pos possible scenarios you have to explore when it comes to gathering your resources. Another thing you want to think about are fixed expenses. Do you, do you need to eliminate some fixed expenses? I'm talking about, you know, things like mortgages or rent, food, right? Now, eliminating or modifying fixed expenses entails a change in your lifestyle. For instance, if you live in a house where you pay, uh, where your mortgage is 1500 and you want to switch to a house where the mortgage is 1000 or 800 that means you know, a series of things, either you, you change neighborhoods or you go to a sort of quote unquote, lower quality, uh, apartment. So it entails that change entails a change in lifestyle. So you gotta be thinking of, you have, you have to be mindful about that. Another thing that you want, you also want to think about is what I call a minimalist budget where you are basically going to the, to the basics, like you are just thinking about what you absolutely need to survive as a human being. So let's say your budget is currently $2,000, right? And, and you have to cut in all the, the, the uh, discretionary expenses and all the, you know, the, 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 the cuttable quote unquote cuttable portion of the, of the fixed expenses. You are, f you, you, you have now what I call a minimalist budget. So you know, going back to what I said earlier, if you have $2,000 where you spend $2,000 on a monthly budget, you might be around 1,000 or 1,200. So that's the idea. The idea is to basically gather your resources and try to limit as much as possible your expenses. All right, I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Q. We're still here today. I just want to quickly let you guys know that I, I appreciate the support. We, the whole team, the whole Sweetie Kiwi team, appreciate the support. And if you are, if you love the, the clarity and the quality of the content so far, please leave a comment. We would love to hear from you. What are the strategies you have put in place to survive, quote unquote, a hard, a difficult moment? Share this content so that everybody else, a lot of people can hear about it like it and please subscribe to our channel we drop we release new shows every single day rain or shine let's move on to tip number two we've talked about tip number one let's go to tip number two now tip number two you want to perform a SWOT analysis now SWOT analysis is very simple it, this is a marketing term that we have used here it has worked tremendously for a lot of people SWOT stands for strengths weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Usually it's something that companies use, but now we're going to apply it to you, to your particular case. If you believe your job is at risk, that you might lose it, you know, any, anytime soon, you want to put on a piece of paper, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what I call areas of improvements, what the opportunities are there in the job market in general or in the economy, and the threats because believe it or not whether the economy is poor or rich whether things are going up or down there are always 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 opportunities the 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 the, the, the basic objective here is to find them to be in the right mindset to be able to find them so you want to list you want to put a piece of paper right now where you want to list the skills you have 
you know, are you good at writing? Are you uh, are you good at uh, uh, creating something? Are you good at drawing? Are you good at dancing? Whatever it is, whatever skills you have, whatever competencies you have, whatever aptitude you have, you want to list it down in one column. In the other column, you want to put down your, your quote-unquote weaknesses. I don't like that word because I believe every human being is just beautiful. People have things they have to work on. So areas of improvement, right? So the areas of improvement should let you know whether or not you need to hone in your to hone in some skills, whether you need to get some training, you need to attend some workshop and some workshops, whether online or offline, right? Whatever the case is, you want to identify and if you are in a in a if you have a cash if cash is tight you might want to look for training opportunities that are free right or semi-free so some kind of hybrid payment arrangement right so the good thing is we live in the era of the internet and there are plenty of opportunities on the internet where you can get free training now depending upon the particular vision you want oh my uh my computer here we need to uh, to fix that depending upon the computer depending upon the computer depending upon the vision you have you want to get a paid or a free opportunity next thing you want to think about is the the you want to think about the opportunities in the market i was uh, really putting just plugging in the uh <laughs> just kind of powering my computer here so the opportunities what are the opportunities in the market based on the skill set you have? What are the threats, right? Let's say, for instance, you are good at copywriting. You are very good at using words. Do you need to maybe, is there an opportunity to set up a website where you can, or register or, you know, sign up with uh, one of those freelancer websites where you can just, you know, draft copy for clients? Do you need to set up a, a, um, a social media account or a page? Right. So those are things you have to think about. Now, maybe there is a possibility of starting a home based business. Right. Because in times of duress, in times of hardship, economic hardship, you might find opportunities. So maybe that dream that you have had for the last 10 years or five years, maybe now is the time to start it. Right. So you can start as a you can start a business or you can just be a freelancer. Now, either way. There are some consequences in terms of um, growth, but also in terms of taxes, right? So if you have a business, depending upon the structure of the business, whether it is S Corp, C Corp, LLC, LLP, you know, sole proprietorship or whatever it is, there are some tax consequences. If you're a freelancer, then that means that you're getting a 1099 at the end of the year from your clients and you have to pay taxes on those, on the, um, on the payments you receive you received throughout the year, right? Now, you, you might also want to think about whether it makes sense to collaborate with other people, right? If you have friends or you have colleagues, uh, you know, the, what I'm trying to say here is that I don't want you to be lethargic. I don't want you to have some kind of sclerosis because you're scared about losing your job. No, we're not reactive here. We are proactive. We are starting, we are, we are, we are, we are on offense we're not on defense here we're on offense we're starting the fight before the the unwelcome happen all right so this is the ideas when it comes to performing a sweat analysis let me take a quick break to come and drink some water and i'll be right back right after this Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. Of course, um, you know, if you love, again, the, the quality and the content so far, please consider subscribing to our channel. Turn on the notification bell. We're trying to grow this community. We receive a lot of feedback. We love receiving feedback from you. So please leave a comment. Let us know what you believe about the topic. Tell us, you know, share with the rest of the community the, the proven things that you use to be able to survive, quote unquote, in a, in a poor economy. You know, share this content, like it, and subscribe. Tip number three, double down on your networking. Now, I hate to say this because it sounds a little, you know, capitalistic, quote unquote. Normally, you don't have to wait for, you should be networking all the time. You don't have to wait for things to be dire, things to be a little difficult before starting to network. Having said that, it's never late, right? So 
you want to double down on your networking. This is very, very important. This is something they should be teaching folks in school because we live, unfortunately, we live in this economy where it's not about what you know. It's about who you know. And, and I believe it's, it has always been that way. It's not just something recent. I believe over the centuries or the, or the millennia, it has always been around who you know. So the thing here is that having a degree gets you a foot in the door. But once you are in the house, once you are in the apartment, once you are within the confines of the company, to move up the ladder, it's who you know. So when it comes to networking, you got you have a, a lot of sources of networking. You can network in the industry, right? You can network with your your alumni association. So folks that you you went to school with, you know, reach out to them. You know, try to you know just uh, you know restart the conversation that you probably never uh, did in the first place. Reach out to your teachers, right? To your professors. If you are comfortable with some professors, you know reach out to them just to see see how they're doing and uh, possibly ask them if they can help you. You can also volunteer. A lot, a lot of folks, when it comes to professional networking, always believe that you, you got to do it within the confines of the industry. No, you can actually just uh, volunteer. You know, you, you, can, you, can, you can find very good people who can be create professional contacts within the, the uh, charitable environment, within the, within the philanthropic realm. Go to special events, right? Happy hours or industry events. This could be a good thing too. If you have children, you know, go to PTOs. You know, um, it, those could be uh, I mean, PTOs, <laughs> PTAs. <laughs> go, you know, go to P, uh, PTAs uh, meetings. This could be very good. Also, this could be a good opportunity to meet other people. And if you want to indulge in you know some leisurely activities. If you have to share a passion, whether it is swimming, golf, traveling, whatever, this could be also a good conduit to meet new people. So doubling down on your networking is very important and it has several benefits. And I'm going to tell you right now, the benefits mean, you know, you have business connections. Again, here we're talking about sharing, right? You're not just taking, you're sharing, which is why I said originally, networking is not something you have to start doing when you need it. You just do it before the unwelcome happen. It's like insurance. Think about it, right? So you get fresh ideas from um, from contacts in the industry. You never know. You can you can actually advance very quickly in your career, and you might also hear about job opportunities, right? You can get career advice and support. You might meet a mentor or a career coach. It's always good to share ideas. You gain self-confidence, which is very important. Well, you know, our research at the Sweetie Kiwi Show has shown us that self-confidence is one of the, what I would say, the quintessential ingredients to move, moving up the ladder. So from, go, from going to a regular manager, a regular line manager, right, to a senior executive, you need confidence. And it also, networking also allows you to have a, to gain a different perspective, which is really, really important in this day and age. All right, folks. So we this is really pretty much it. We just want to wrap up today's conversation. Again, you know, the three proven tips you should do right away if you believe that you might lose your job or gather all your resources, perform a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And number three, you want to double down on your networking. All right. Thanks so much for listening to me. I really appreciate it. And before I let you go, again, I would love you to subscribe if you believe we have added value to your life. Please subscribe to our channel, The Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are the number one infotainment show, and we release new shows every single day. Share, like, comment, and I will see you next time. But before then, remember, stay, stay marvelous.